What's up, Low Heat Sneaker Fam? Got a very exciting pair for you today. Very exciting pair of Low Heat that I paid above retail for. So I don't know if you call that Low Heat. I, I call it Low Heat still because it's not like, um, you know, double the cost. Very excited about this pair. Um, and I will say that sometimes, I'm not going to cap, sometimes in these videos I say I'm going to keep a pair. And after a while, sitting on it, thinking about it, it's like, I don't need this pair, and I sell it, trade it, whatever. Get rid of it. This, with these, with 100% certainty, I will wear and keep. I'm very excited about it. Even though I didn't get these for retail, uh, I, I had to have them. And so I went to good old eBay here. Not sponsored. Go ahead, sponsor me, eBay. I love that. Um, went to eBay here and uh, got these because they were... Uh, cheaper on eBay uh, than StockX. Although eBay is, is changing their their sh sneaker selling fee policy. For a while there, it was awesome with like the zero fees um, on hundred dollar plus sales. Now they're going, they're doing away with that. Unfortunately, it got too expensive for them. And so it'll be interesting to see how the, the price markets of the various platforms change in the future. But either way, I got this from eBay because it just was the, the cheapest. And I am super excited to see to get these. So these are the Air Jordan 1 Elements. In, uh, I got these in size 12. And it uh, looks like they came from Europe. Uh, and these retail for 200 US dollars. And I will say, I was in Europe uh, last month, and I did see a couple of these on shelves, actually. In Europe, uh, Jordan 1s are very popular. They're, like, really the, the only Jordan model that's popular. Even Jordan 1 mids are popular in certain parts of Europe because Jordan 1 highs are so hard to get. People just wear Jordan 1 mid mids, and it's not doesn't have the stigmatism it does here. Um, but even with the popularity there, I still was able to see a couple of these on shelves. Unfortunately, they were not my size. Otherwise, I for sure would have copped over there. So I have had these in hand before. Um, so this isn't my first time seeing them. But here they are. Damn. Damn. Here you got your eBay authenticity guarantee. And you got the Gore-Tex hang tag. Because anytime they use Gore-Tex, Gore-Tex uh, branding um, is added uh, to the product. And these are fire. These are so fire. I would make some pun about them being, uh, I don't know, icy because uh, they're winter, winter themed shoes. But uh, I'll let you put in the comments your best uh, pun. So, so many things, so many things, so many things. So I got these on eBay because on StockX right now, the this colorway, or this model, is going for around two fifty. When you add in taxes, fees, you're pro you're you're pushing three hundred. You're you're close to three hundred for a pair, and in in both colorways, both light bone and the particle gray uh, colorway. Let's see what the uh, they call it on the box here. Um, sale. Light bone college gray. So these started out at a higher price point, retail price point. These started out at um, 200. Usually Jordan 1s are 170, but I think uh, in 2022 they're going to start changing the MSRP on these and push them uh, up higher. Uh, so yeah. So they started out at a higher price point to begin with. So that's part of the reason they're going for 250 plus. But this is, oh, there's some discoloration right there oh well i'm gonna be wearing these these are gonna get beat um part of the excitement about these particularly is in the last few years streetwear has become more mainstream um so things with you know gore-tex has always been a streetwear staple ha has become more popular and this is the first time gore-tex has been used on a jordan brand product jordan brand sneaker uh, so that's very exciting. A couple years back, they had a they've had various winterized winterized Jordans. Um, so you know, ones with uh, different materials, warmer, etc., more water resistant. Um, they put out the Jordan Four, which was winterized in like navy blue a couple years ago. Uh, this year, they had the uh, Jordan Fourteen in brown that was winterized. This is the first Gore-Tex 
Jordan sneaker product. So that's very exciting. One reason to be excited. And I think these are going to keep going up um, while we're talking about pricing. I think these are going to keep climbing. But before you run out and spend close to $300 on a pair, I do think they will keep making these. Like next year, I bet another colorway or two drop in Jordan 1 Gore-Tex, um, potentially, or down the line, a couple years from now. So if you want these now for this winter or going into next winter, you pay the sooner, I think, the better. Um, maybe they'll dip a little bit in the summertime when no one's buying these, but then come next fall and winter, these are going to start climbing back up uh, until they drop another pair. And even so, this colorway is so clean. I like the particle gray, but this is just more me. I like white, light-colored shoes better. Um, so th this was the colorway for me. Some of you might like the particle gray more. Um, but back to other the other winterized Jordans, uh, they... Like the Jordan 4 from two years ago, I remember that being on sale at some point. It didn't sell well. Now, if you look online, that definitely is above retail. Um, so similarly, the Jordan 14 this year, uh, that I've seen that restocked, and you can get that for retail or maybe even on sale. Um, I, I don't, that's not as popular a model, so I don't think that's going to climb. But I, I just remember the Jordan 4 from two years ago sat at retail, under retail, on sale for over a year. And now it's finally like, I don't know, people realized they wanted to wear Jordans in the winter finally. And they, that price on that shoe has gone up. So likewise, I think they're going to go up on this. Jordan 1, obviously very popular silhouette. Gore-Tex, always popular amongst hype beasts and streetwear people. And so that's that's what this is for me. This is like peanut butter and jelly. You got my one of my favorite silhouettes ever, and you add Gore-Tex to it. Uh, makes this wearable in the winter. That's fantastic. Um, speaking of which, I just... I love these. I just did a wear review on these. Gore-Tex Air Force Ones. Check that wear review out. And so I couldn't be happier to get these. Add another sh sneaker you can wear outside in the winter, not have to worry about. I mean, that's fantastic. Um, ooh, the insoles pulled up here, probably to check that it's real. Um, put that back down. I'm gonna try on this pair while I keep talking about it. So, a couple things, yeah, check out that wear review. These were great, um, but I give all the details there. So, just like here, you have here you have kind of like real leather, a thin layer of real leather. Here, um, you also have a Nubuck, Nubuck? What, how do you guys pronounce it? Nubuck or Nubuck? Um, suede, water-resistant uh, leather right here. It's very soft. And um, you can see uh, the upper that usually has perforated uh, leather toe box here. It's looks di it's dimpled but it's not actually perforated like a normal Jordan 1 so it just has the Jordan 1 uh, perforated look but this is made from that um, water resistant nylon mesh and it has a Gore-Tex inner sock liner it doesn't say huh, interesting it doesn't say on, on the inside here in the sock liner Gore-Tex uh, it says it on the insole there you can see the branding but it doesn't say it from what i can tell yeah on the sock liner unlike the air force one which i show off in the wear review does say gore-tex on the sock liner so that's one little interesting bit um they also have you can see the tongue here isn't fully separated um what do they call this there's a special word for this, um, gusseted, a gusseted tongue. It's not separated. So if you get water there, it doesn't automatically seep down the side of the tongue. That's the same on these Air Force Ones. I forgot to mention that in the wear view, review, this gusseted tongue. How many of you knew that word? I sure didn't. Um, you have this interesting outsole, uh, two different colors. I don't know what the inspiration for that is, what that's supposed to mimic, ice or... Uh, someone smarter than me can tell me. I don't. I don't know what that is, but it's cool. Uh, let's try these on. So I did run across a size 11 over in Zurich, and I tried that on. I can. I can fit most 11 Jordan ones. Jordan ones run true to size, but I can fit an 11. It's a little snug, but I have um, a couple pairs of size 11s, and they're fine. These did seem too 
These seemed too uh, tight though, way too tight. And then especially with thicker socks that you might wear in winter, just um, you gotta do, um, you gotta go true to size at least. I went half size up just to ensure that I could wear these with thicker socks. Right now I'm wearing Stance Johnny Cash socks. And let's see here as I slide them in. Yeah. Yeah, I could have gone true to size for sure. But I like that there's a little wiggle room for thicker socks. Um, you can tell this tongue isn't the standard foam tongue. It's got that same material, waterproof material right there. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy to go a half size up with these. Also, you know, with like keeping warm, you don't always want things skin tight. That, uh, cuts off circulation and the blood flow is what keeps you warm. Yeah. Blood, as you know, runs super hot. Um, so you do want some blood flow, but man, do these not look icy? Look at that. With the stance Johnny Cash socks. Now, typically with these specific, this specific pair, I'll be wearing pants, obviously, in Gore-Tex situations. But I love, uh, I love being able to not worry about my shoes in the rain and the uh, in winter conditions. So this is perfect. I mean, any other Jordan one, I probably wouldn't wear in the snow. These, I would have no wear problem wearing in the rain or slush. And what's great about Jordan 1, you can kind of dress it up, dress it down. So uh, maybe you're not fine dining in these, but you can totally, you know, walk into a restaurant and wear these or go to work in these. I will also mention that the swoosh, the Gore-Tex logo, and the wings are all reflective. Mentioned that in the description. I, uh, I can't tell, obviously. I'm not in the dark. I don't have a spotlight on it. But that's a cool addition. The swoosh is not a leather uh, swoosh. It's just a piece of, looks like synthetic reflective material. But I find that cool that the Gore-Tex hit and the wings and, and the swoosh are all um, reflective. So I already mentioned it a little bit, but uh, these I do think are going to slowly climb. I don't, I don't think it's, if these climb much more over 300, if it costs you over 300, I, I mean, that's expensive to begin with. Even 200 is expensive, you know, for some people. Uh, 100 is expensive, so, you know, that's not nothing. I would say I would be hesitant to, hesitant to pay over 300 for these or much more over 300 because I do think in the future there will be more Gore-Tex, Jordan 1s, Gore-Tex, Jordan 4s. Maybe not soon. This might take till next winter, obviously, or the winter after that. Um, but I do think there will be more and a chance for you to get them at retail or just above retail like me. Uh, that being said, if you really want a pair like me, if you really want a pair, I'd get them sooner than later. I do think these are going to creep up until they drop another pair. And if they drop another pair, who knows if the colorway is going to be great. I, I, as I said, I didn't love the particle gray one when I first saw that. But then shortly after they released the pictures of these, I'm like, oh my god, I must have. I, I, I need these. Need these. So, yeah, it's interesting. The insole is pulled up probably from the eBay authentication process. Um, this one says Nike Air on that, the left, left insole. It's interesting. Um, I will say that these probably can't submerge these in, you know, water. You know, obviously if it runs past the mid-level with the gusseted tongue, it's going to flow in. Um, I don't know how sealed the stitching is and stuff, but these are great just in general rain, mist, uh, light water puddles. Uh, the, in general, the, the Gore-Tex shoes have been great in my experience, the Nikes. So, uh, please, I haven't plugged the channel yet. Please subscribe. That'd be greatly appreciated. I'm going to have another Gore-Tex, uh, wear review video, Gore-Tex Nike wear review video of some runners that I, I wore in Europe along with these ones. Check out the wear review on these. Um, so I'll have a whole line of Nike Gore-Tex reviews. So far, just an unboxing on these, but eventually I'll give a wear review on these down the road. And I have some more uh, low heat on the way, some more uh, different unboxings and reviews. So drop a comment, drop a like, um, subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. Let's give these a, a rating hmm. before we get out of here. Uh, Jordan 1 silhouette, love it. Gore-Tex, love it. Colorway, 
really great. Um, so I think just Jordan 1 and Gore-Tex alone, the, the pairing, that peanut butter and jelly pairing, first time ever, uh, not really a collab, but uh, uh, that already earns it like above an eight. This colorway is, is, is like, this colorway is like, it, it, it's dope. It's clean, it's sick. No extra laces though, but that's okay. You're gonna wear these black ones. That's perfect for what, beat, beating up some Jordan ones. Um, definitely over an eight, the colorway is great. So I'm gonna give these like an 8.75, right out of the gate. I mean, you can't get a better winter sneaker than this, right? Like what else do you want? This, this might not be the most comfortable to do a ton of walking in, and that's why I'm gonna review the runners. Um, subscribe for that, because those were more comfortable, obviously, for a ton of walking, but Jordan ones I find to be decently comfortable in, uh, you know, if you're not walking a ton. I, I find these more comfortable than other Jordan ones, the, just the room in the foot. Um, so I think these, these are great. I'm gonna give it 8.75. So there you go, there you have it. That's the unboxing. That's the initial review. Yo, if you're still watching, I appreciate it. I always forget things. I have to add them like, uh, well, like a, a bonus trailer at the end of a Marvel movie. So two things uh, I forgot to mention. I just want to point out quick, uh, if you happen to still be watching, is this collar, this uh, liner, ankle liner, uh, is like a more insulated version than a typical Jordan to keep you warm. I don't know if you can tell. It's more plush, thick, and uh, yeah. It's for warmth. And then that's kind of on the inside of the tongue there. And so that'll all keep your foot warm. And then if you didn't notice as I was, as I was moving, uh, holding up the shoe, you have the Nike Air tag, which is different, as you can tell, than a normal Nike Air Jordan tag on the tongue. It's uh, It's been moved up and around this stitch tongue. You got the wide stitching right there, like they do on some Jordans. Like, some drawings lately, they've been doing like the square label. So this is a mix of that square label on the tongue that they've been doing with the, the wide um, cross stitching there, but with like a normal Nike Air tag. Cause usually this is just moved up, right? And then it's uh, hugs the top of the tongue right there where the break is before the copyright information, or the trademark information. So here, for whatever stylistic reason, they've just moved it around uh, the front, which I don't know. Interesting reasoning. They didn't want that little bit on the inside. They wanted the tongue, uh, the lining to be there. Uh, I don't know. Just a, uh, another form of deconstruction that they've uh, moved towards with the latest trends. But uh, yeah, just thought I'd point that out, those little differences. So there you have it.